It's been, oh, all of a month since Sony released new hardware in the form of PlayStation VR, but like the insatiable, many-tentacled consumerist colossus we are, we can't say no to a shiny new piece of gaming hardware, especially one that makes good on the promise of ultra-high def 4K gaming. And so, my friends, say hello to the club sandwich of games consoles, the PlayStation 4 Pro. It's bigger, it's pricier, and it's more powerful. But more than that, it's the start of a bold experiment that begins with the Pro and continues with Microsoft's Project Scorpio next year. Are console gamers willing to upgrade every couple of years, or is this a step too far towards the fragmented fuss of PC gaming? Let's find out, shall we? At £350 or $400, the PS Pro is a good 100 bucks more expensive than its now amateur sibling, but you do get quite a bit for your money. For starters, the PS4 Pro is physically the biggest PS4 so far. Those with particularly packed AV cabinets may want to measure up. It's nicely designed if you can see past the sandwich look with the same rounded edges as the PS4 Slim. The physical power buttons have been widened to make them easier to tell apart, while round back there's a kettle-style power plug for the internal power supply. A HDMI 2.0 port, PlayStation camera port, optical out, an additional USB port and Ethernet round out the ports. And yes, you can still replace the hard drive, although the Pro is fitted with a larger 1TB model as standard. There's still no 4K Blu-ray drive though, which for a console that's all about Ultra HD is a very strange omission, and you can't play 4K files from a USB stick either. But it's what's going on elsewhere inside the PS4 Pro that counts. There's a beefier GPU based on AMD's 14 nanometer Polaris architecture, which debuted in the RX 480 PC graphics card, as well as a higher clock speed for the 8-core CPU. Thermally, it's largely the same as the OG PS4, although the fan is noticeably whinier. There's an extra gig of standard DDR3 RAM 2 for OS use, which means devs have access to the full, fast 8GB of Unified GDDR5 memory for the first time. But just what can you do with all this extra horsepower besides lord it over your standard PS4 owning friends? Well, the answer depends on three things. Do you have a 4K TV? Do you have a HDR TV? Just how much do you care about graphics? With just 4.2 teraflops of processing power, that's less than the 6.5 of Nvidia's GTX 1070 and the 6 of Microsoft's Project Scorpio, the PS4 Pro is something of a halfway house between a full 4K ready gaming PC and the original PS4. Outside of a few older re-releases like Skyrim or some newer ones like Mantis Burn Racing, native 4K resolution, which pushes four times as many pixels as full HD 1080p, isn't feasible. Instead, most games that offer 4K use a unique upscaling technique called checkerboarding. This is the process of turning a 2x2 pixel block into a 4x4 pixel block with some slick post-processing techniques like temporal anti-aliasing. It needs a larger frame buffer to start with, but the results are far more hardware efficient than native 4K and can be just as impressive. Now, this isn't a 4K video you're watching, but this gameplay from Rise of the Tomb Raider is being displayed on my 4K TV. If we zoom in and turn 4K rendering on and off, you can easily see the difference in the edges of objects. This might not be native 4K, but it's very, very close, and this comes from someone that has a 4K gaming PC plugged into the TV. PS4 Pro can pump out some seriously sharp, good-looking visuals. Other games like Infamous and Call of Duty Remastered scale up to 1800p rather than 2160p, but still look noticeably sharper than full HD, while Deus Ex uses dynamic scaling to adjust the resolution on the fly. Or you can decide to forego 4K entirely and opt for more visual effects, or performance at 60 frames per second. Yes, console gamers, you can now join the PC master race and tinker with settings menus inside your favorite games instead of actually playing them. Isn't the future wonderful? Unfortunately, figuring out which games support PS4 Pro, let alone what features they have, is something of a mystery. Many games are getting a free downloadable patch, but there's no Pro icon next to games or a 4K logo to suggest that it supports fancy upscaling or any of the other Pro features. I can understand wanting to keep things simple, but making console gamers crawl the interwebs for deets when a simple icon would do is a step too far. 
Hell, when you boot up the console, you wouldn't even know you were playing on a Pro at all. For £350 each time it boots, I want this thing to render pixel-perfect unicorns that fart, HDR rainbows that melt into pools of golden PS4 Pro logos that suddenly explode and turn into a thousand Katy Perrys that tell me how pretty I am while Strauss plays. Something like that anyway. And then there's high dynamic range support, which I sadly can't show you here because this isn't a HDR 4K TV, this isn't a HDR video, and you're most likely not watching this on a HDR TV at home. But you can take mine and esteemed Ars reviewer Kyle Orland's word for it when we say that if you do have a good HDR TV, and that means one with an actual 10-bit panel that meets UHD premium specs at a minimum, then there are some impressive results to be had. UHD widens the gap between the darkest parts of the image and the brightest, allowing for greater contrast ratio and a wider range of colours. It's not quite the revelation that a UHD Blu-ray film is, but once you've seen PS4 Pro in UHD in action, it's tough to go back. Everything just looks that much more lifeless without it. That said, you don't technically need a PS4 Pro for HDR. Sony updated the original PS4 to support it earlier this year. The question is, if you don't have a 4K TV, is the PS Pro worth it? Sure, there are improvements to be had even if you have a 1080p TV, thanks to things like super sampling and 60fps modes. And if you have PSVR, the additional processing power means that while the hardware resolution of the headset doesn't change, the quality of the visuals pumped into it do. It's noticeably easier to read in-game text, while overall everything has a much cleaner look. That's a near thousand dollar problem few people will have though. A PS4 Pro doesn't get you access to any new games, and you don't get any exclusive games either. Sony is making sure games launch on the old PS4 too, at least for now. For people that already own a PS4, there's simply little reason to upgrade. If however you're new to the PS4, go for the Pro. It's a future-proof system that provides the best console visuals around, and at a much lower cost than a similarly capable gaming PC. Whether or not that's enough of a market to kickstart the great console upgrade experiment, especially considering over 40 million people already own a PS4, remains to be seen. The PS4 Pro is not a bad start though. We'll move Microsoft.